Hi, this is Random Rob. Welcome back to the new show. Tonight I'm talking about Pitch Black. Pitch Black originally began as a screenplay by screenwriters Jim and Ken Wheat. Uh, the original story was called Nightfall. Uh, the Wheat brothers were most well known for their screenplays for Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Fly 2, and The Ewok Adventure. Nightfall dealt with a female space barbarian named Tara Krieg who helps a group of spaceship crash survivors defend themselves against alien ghosts on this lost planet called Hades. When screenwriter and filmmaker David Toohey started rewriting their screenplay, he had had an interest in exploring some characters from some scripts he had written for Alien 3. I think he had written two scripts, one that featured Ripley, one that did not, and I think he was in the middle of working on a third one when he realized that Fox had already attached another screenwriter and he, he walked off that project. And he liked Nightfall a lot, but thought it needed some tweaks. In the past, Tui had written films like The Fugitive, uh, The Arrival, Waterworld, G.I. Jane, and the adaptation of Philip K. Dick's Imposter, uh, Gary Sinise, which is actually one of the better low-budget Philip K. Dick adaptations out there. It does a very good job expanding on that very short story. Tui's really good at doing character surprises and character turns. It's one of the reasons I'm a really big fan of his work. In his rewrite of Nightfall, he would turn the barbarian character of Tara Krieg into the notorious convict Richard B. Riddick, played wonderfully by Vin Diesel in his first real breakout film role. He would change the alien ghosts into a living alien creature with a distinct life cycle. I think part of that probably came from his work on Alien 3. And he would make other changes to some of the story's main characters, including turning a Christian techno-priest character into an Islamic holy man, he turned the character of Johns into a drug addict, and also added the geologist's camp and the solar orrery, where Fry realizes that the eclipse is about to happen. Pitch Black was shot over 65 days in the South Australian mining town of Cooper Petty, which has also been featured in uh, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome and Red Planet, among other movies interesting detail about Cooper Petty is that it's actually very cold. Temperatures when they were shooting never got above 50 degrees during the daytime, so sweat was actually added to the actors by misting them. They were actually all very cold. Some other trivia about the shoot. The contact lenses worn by Vin Diesel in the film were made by a contact lens company called LensQuest. The name of the lens was Shine Job named for the eye shining talked about in the film. At one point during the production, Diesel found that the lenses had gotten stuck to his corneas and they actually had to fly in an optometrist from the nearest town, which was over an hour away by plane, to remove them. There's a scene in the film where Riddick dislocates his shoulder to escape his, his chains. Diesel actually did that move. There's a little bit of special effects assistance in it, but the rest is real. The creatures in Pitch Black were designed by Patrick Tatopoulos and had a three-stage life form. The first stage was a larval stage, which are the glowing larvae that they find in the mound at the end of the film that Fry puts into a bottle to return to the camp. Uh, the young form of the creatures are the small flyers, and then there's the large adult form with the distinctive hammerhead. The movie cost about 23 million to make. It ended up making about 56 million worldwide. It was considered a sleeper hit, even though it did not get the best reviews at the time. Notably, Roger Ebert thought that the writing in it was a step backwards from the arrival, which is kind of ironic in hindsight because Riddick produced several high-profile sequels, an animated story directed by Peter Chung of Eon Flux, the excellent Escape from Butcher Bay video game and its sequel, Assault on Dark Athena. And there are still Riddick projects from David Toohey in the works. 
There was even a prequel that was written by David Hayter, who most people know as the voice of Solid Snake, that was going to expand on the backstory that David Toohey had originally imagined for Riddick, where Riddick had been a soldier who had ethical issues with the military and ends up being in prison. And in Hayter's story, this bit of business that lands Riddick in jail ends up being the fault of John's and the beginning of their relationship. What I like most about this movie, and I don't know if David Toohey intended this or it's just part of the way he works, is the fact that Pitch Black involves an eclipse happening on this planet, the idea of the planet turning into darkness, and that the three main characters in the film, Riddick, Johns, and Fry, also all have character turns. They all have a secret and a surprise. In the case of Fry, we find out she is not the most noble pilot, in that she tries to jettison the passengers of the ship, and then at the end ends up sacrificing herself. Johns, who at the start of the film we think is probably some sort of capable lawman, turns out to be a junkie bounty hunter, who as the film goes on we realize has no ethics at all, and that he's perfectly willing to sacrifice some of the survivors just to keep them alive as they cross through the darkened desert to get back to the ship. And Riddick, at the end of the film, has a character turn also in that we find out that he does have a heart, that he does have respect and honor. And it's just, it's really fun going back and watching it now, seeing a film that has these layered character reversals running throughout it. Most films you see tend to involve maybe one or two reversals, but Pitch Black and really all of Tui's films are full of reversals. And the real fun of Riddick's character in all the Riddick movies is that he almost invariably does what he should not do in a given situation. And it's really a running theme throughout the series, and to me one of the best thematic examinations of an anti-hero for that reason that these reversals are all laid into the stories and this idea becomes a lot more apparent in the sequel Chronicles of Riddick and in fact makes certain parts of that movie a lot easier to understand and we'll talk about that next time. So, thanks for checking in. If you like what you heard, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe and consider becoming a patron of the new show. This is Random Rob. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.